Good morning. It is the big show with Glenn Angel and the Flying Dutchman, and we have our very special guest who's just walked into the studio, Minister of State for Home Affairs and Social and Family Development, Miss Sun Sherling. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi everyone. Good morning, Good morning. Minister. Good morning. Thank you so much for taking time off uh, to be with us this morning. Okay, I think somebody's uh, somebody's computer is going off. Mm. All right, let's just handle that. Uh, if you want to uh, f- watch us on The Big Show and The Big Show TV, it's Facebook and YouTube.com slash Kiss92FM. If you have any questions for the minister at all, you can also WhatsApp it in to double eight double five zero nine two zero. So, Minister, my question for you uh, before we start off the show is um, who inspired you growing up and who inspires you now? Wow. <laughs> I don't have a specific person in mind, but every day when I walk around and I see ordinary Singaporeans going about their work, and I think that actually behind every ordinary Singaporean, everyone is capable of doing so much, you know. And you see it in little kind deeds around right. you. Um, when you see people offering to help out the homeless, for instance, um, I think you've seen recent reports about a number of homeless coming down in Singapore. Yes. Uh, by 40%. Uh, when you see social workers trying to help uh, children who have suffered abuse at the hands of loved ones, all these are ordinary Singaporeans. And I think it is these people who give me strength because there is a hero behind all of us. Oh, nice. that's a nice statement. Very nice. So, uh, what do you, how do you balance your day-to-day i mean that you do so much i mean we see you on social media you're constantly out there uh but you have to have a life as well so how do you find the balance i think first and foremost it's important for each and every one of us to find ikigai you know (laughs) purpose (laughs) and mission of life um and when your work is not work but it's passion Mm. and when you live every day and you know that waking up and doing something is because you love doing it and you can bring along your family and friends along with you on this journey, it's not that tiring. So I think the difficulty is finding that purpose and meaning in life, which doesn't necessarily follow a linear path. And sometimes you have to go through all trials and tribulations uh, before you find that path. But it's possible. Because, you know, I, 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 I follow you on social media and you're, you're incredibly busy. <laughs> we all follow you on social you're, media. You're, you're, always, kind. you're always doing something. Um, with what little spare time you have, what do you do? Make it look so easy. Yeah, you make it look so easy. I read. I really okay. do. Oh. I do storytelling every weekend. Okay. And to be honest, to find one suitable children's book to read out to the audiences, I probably have to go through at least 10. Mm. Wow. Um, and there are, there are so many good books, but I only have maybe, what, 10 minutes online with mm. uh, audiences over Facebook Live, and I want to make it count. Mm. So I need to find books that you know you can get to the message very quickly and mm. help our parents have that communication with their kids. Mm. So actually, quite a fair bit of work you know goes into it. And but also, kids have such a short span attention of attention span yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So, um, so what do I do in my spare time? I read. I read a lot. Um, children's books. I I read books on uh, the political economy because I think as a politician I have to be aware of what's happening around us mm. uh, at the same time I read uh, books that are good for my soul you know like the chicken soup for the soul okay, type yeah. of books right. mm. I need to pick myself up too you know mm. self care right. is yeah. important yeah. Yeah. you watch very little TV I gather I, I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> Netflix sorry. for you <laughs> sorry Media Corp <laughs> <laughs> we are with Minister of State for Home Affairs and Social and Family Development Miss Sun Shilling. now we've asked you to pick a few songs uh, for the show yes. and I believe the first song that you've picked is by Shakira it's called uh, Try Everything yes. uh, why do you pick this song? Actually um, two of the songs I picked today Try Everything and A Million Dreams are both my children's favourite songs oh, oh nice okay. uh, they somehow teach it in preschool or in primary school more so in preschool I think you know the children out and about performing show and tell and all that yeah. and these were their favourite songs mm. and they know the lyrics by heart uh, they sing it very often at home, and I find it very positive, you know. So lyrics such as, uh, um, I think in Try Everything, it goes, it starts off by saying, I messed up tonight, um, lost another fight, hmm. um, lost to myself, but I'll just start again. You know, and I think that's great, you know, it's great yeah. that the children feel this way, and when they sing that song, it invigorates me as well. Oh, that's great. Nice. Okay. Shakira right. at preschool, I love it. <laughs> so this song's for you and your kids. This is Shakira, Try Everything on KISS 92. to 
to know you a little bit better. Uh, what are some of your favorite local dishes and where's your favorite place to go and eat? I like to hang around uh, East Coast Park, you know, places where there are parks and beaches. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm at that age, you know, <laughs> 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 whereby um, I, I, I need to find like a, 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 a kampung, kampung type of place, mm. you know, where, you know, kind of like lives going on a little bit more slowly. Simpler times. Simple, you know, literally feel the breeze, watch the leaves, you know, wave in the air from the wind, right. mm. um, look at the sand, put on a pair of sunglasses, fall asleep if you like to, mm -hmm. nice. and nobody would notice, hopefully. <laughs> then you must go earlier part of the week then, because the weekends it's are crowded, right? so yeah. crowded. In fact, the, the evenings are so crowded these days in the That's East. True. I remember once wanting to go for a jog. Mm. I, I don't stay in the East anymore. I grew up in the East. Uh, I stay in the Bridal area now. But I like um, you know running along the East Coast. And I went there in the evening. It was so yes. crowded. And Makes public it holidays. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can't find the green. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I normally go in the mornings. I mm. prefer the mornings because I think it's a fresh start to the day. It is. Um, and typically because at night I go to my constituency um, a lot. So it's difficult to mm. find time at night. Mm -hmm. um, right. But in the mornings and on weekend, also in the mornings. If you wake up early enough, you bring the kids, you go to the beach. They just want to build sand castles. Literally <laughs> build sand castles. Yeah. Yeah. And in the morning, no is going to step on their sandcastle. Mm. <laughs> that is true. That is true. You know who used to go for walks in the mornings uh, before? The late President Nathan. Mm. That's I right. remember okay. when I was on yes. leave one time, I went for a run in the morning and I bumped into him. Oh, oh. nice, nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah. What about food? What's your food? favorite? Um, all the unhealthy stuff, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay, laksa, we eat unhealthy stuff too. The chak kway tiaos, um, the carrot the cake. Oh, oh, yeah. The brown one with all the sauces. Oh, oh, yeah. oh you're okay. a black carrot cake girl, yes. same as me. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. Um, other than East Coast, which is a naturally relaxing place, do you have any, have any other favorite hangouts in Singapore? I also go to Siloso Beach, Palawan Beach. And You're really very much a beach person. Yes. So your holidays would be beach uh, destinations, would you say? Um, uh, yes, I've been to the Maldives mm. and I'm thinking of going to Jeju Island. You oh, know, right, just, okay. just being mm. away from the hustle and bustle. I must say that when I was um, younger, I always thought that my dream apartment would be a place that looks over the soaring skyscrapers of Singapore. Mm. Right, right. Mm. But now when I think about it, I think it's stressful. Yeah. <laughs> so you would rather like a villa on the cliff overlooking the ocean or the beach? Might not Something like that? a villa make, or an apartment. It a kampong, doesn't kampong. matter, <laughs> you know. But, you know, literally a place where you can watch the grass grow, I mm. think. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Which is why I think you like the east because, I mean, there's a nice sea view there mm. as it's well. It's really back and it's, I don't know, it's just you, you see people walking around in slippers and yeah. Bermudas. Yeah. It's as yeah. laid back as you can get in Singapore. Yes. I mean, uh, right. You can go to, you can go to Pulau Ubin but, yeah, and Pulau yeah. Island. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the mosquito repellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so today, um, I think we really want to talk to you about scams. Yes. I know FD um, did uh, host an I, event I, with you and I found out a little scaminar, bit more. Uh, and it, it struck me. The, the scamina left me with, with, with a lot. Mm. I walked away with a lot. Perhaps you could uh, talk about some of the more common scams that are hitting Singapore now. Yes, I mean, we've been fighting scams for quite a few years now. Um, we have made some headway. In terms of absolute number of scams, unfortunately, it's still going up. I mm. think the recent numbers show up um, that it's still increasing by about 24%. Um, but in terms of the absolute amount of money is lost per scam, it mm. has come down. Oh, and that's oh, good. Okay. Okay. I think it's a function of various things. You know, banks have put in uh, transaction limits. Mm. Um, I think people are also careful about uh, the limits that they set on their own bank accounts. Mm. You know, um, and but. Unfortunately, because Singaporeans are so digitally connected, so yeah. we do a lot of shopping online, so mm. you do see things like e-commerce scams going up. Mm, okay. um, recently, I think also because of um, you know, uh, housing rentals, uh, there are also, mm. there's also an increase in the rise of property rental scams. Uh, but a large number of the victims are actually newcomers into Singapore who don't mm. really know that you really shouldn't be going onto Facebook to look for right. um, property. I listings. saw one of those yesterday yeah. for an apartment yes. and I knew immediately it was a scam because yeah. based on the price. Because you know certain areas don't go for that kind of price, mm. and I immediately knew it was it was mm. a fraudulent uh, posting. Yeah. yeah, and one other um, one other typology is really job scams. 
Mm. And that's because I think many Singaporeans, I mean, you spend so much time online, right? So if somebody tells you, hey, just go onto this website, click reviews and whatsoever, you get paid for it, you know, it's it's believable. So, it is, yeah. and people think, oh, you know, it's something I can do at home. An easy extra money. buck or two, mm. easy money. What's there to lose, you know? And before you know it, you get into this, like, I give you so much, you give me that much. And then yeah. before you know it, $20,000 goes over, it doesn't come back. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 I, I think we, we shouldn't be complacent, you know, because many people feel, oh, no, it's not going to happen to me. Exactly. I'm smarter than that. And then before you know it, they're scammed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, because these scammers are very, very smart. Yeah, they're very clever. They have all sorts of scams. I mean, uh, I think a friend a friend was sh- showing us some screenshots of some payments that were made to Apple. Oh. So he's already an Apple user. But the payments were made in Singapore dollars as opposed to the constant US dollar that it's made in. And it comes from like Apple.co instead of Apple.com. Um, you know, and, yeah. and, and they start with a l- couple of cents which you don't notice, then a couple of dollars, and when no one's flagging it, then they really up the amount that's taken out the accounts. Yes. So I think in terms of uh, fighting and acting against scams, we are really trying to go upstream. And what we mean by that is that, for example, the, the, the poor Singapore police force is having to <laughs> devote a lot of resources into mm. um, finding ways to troll through, through scam websites to identify right. and take them down. Yeah. Because we really have to go into uh, prevention. Right. Yes, for mm. sure. Okay, Minister, hold on. We'll go back on the radio and uh, perhaps we'll ask you uh, that very first yeah. question mm-hmm. once again. Yeah. Kiss 92 Traffic. On the SLE heading towards the CTE right after the Mandai, Mandai Avenue exit, an accident has been reported causing quite a bit of backup to Woodlands Avenue 2's exit. Avoid lane 3 if you're along that stretch and if you have any other news, it's 88550920. Stay safe. Good morning and welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. This morning, we're very happy to have with us in the studio Minister of State for Home Affairs and Social and Family Development, Ms. Sun Sherling. And earlier on, we heard a song by the Beatles called Here Comes the Sun. That was another uh, pick of yours. Yes. Why did you choose that song, Minister? I think there is a line in, in, in that song that says it's been a long, cold winter. Mm -hmm. Uh, But Here Comes the Sun. And that was a song that really piqued my interest when... um, Because we were undergoing COVID, right? Right. And I think it was three years. You know, we were all... We don't exactly have winter here in Singapore, but we were kept indoors. We couldn't quite socialize. And I think to us, that's as wintry as it can get. <laughs> yeah. And I think we all like to be out and about where it's warm and it's sunny and just enjoy each other's company. So I thought that song would be nice. Absolutely. Yes. I remember pick. being cooped up at home and wondering, when, when? when, when is, is this going end? to end? Yeah, no one knew it would go on for so long. But here we are. It is a bright, sunshiny day and we're all in the studio, maskless as well. No yes. social distancing. So it's nice to see. Well, Minister, it's so good to have you with us this morning. And uh, we're, we're talking about the rise in online scams here in Singapore. Mm-hmm. How big is this problem? It's a huge problem. <laughs> more than half the number of crimes in Singapore are now cybercrime, of which mm. are scams from more than 90%. Um, so it's a huge concern in terms of an absolute number of scams, um, absolute number of crimes, offences that are being committed. And I think what's scary about it is that basically because it is so international, right, the scope, when you lose your money, the money gets transferred out, yeah. there's very little chance of getting it back. Mm. So it's not like in Singapore with a physical crime. You know, I, I think we've got our police network out and about, our cameras and everything. If you commit a crime in Singapore, the extremely high possibilities, you're going to get caught. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. But for scams, because of that you know, international transfers uh, of monies, it's very hard for us to get it back. So I think that's what's so scary about it. And the scammers are sitting in so many different countries exactly. in call centers. Yes. So that, that's my question. I mean, how do we know a scam call is a scam call? Because uh, a lot of people run businesses internationally. Mm-hmm. And if they miss a call from, say, overseas, say mm-hmm. America, or they think it's America, mm-hmm. that could be a million dollars worth of business lost. Yes. But it could also be a scam call. So how do we tell the difference? I mean, do we pick up the call? So w- one of the first things we went out with was to tell everyone to be careful about calls that you're receiving that are prefixed plus 65, for mm, instance. Mm, and yeah. then we wrote out Scam Shield, 
whereby as long as any member of the public reports it as being a scam call, that number would have been in a way blacklisted and blocked. Even international numbers? Yeah, as okay. long as because if it's like a robocall or whatsoever, there's an yeah. identifier to it, we would just block it. So that's the effectiveness of Scam Shield. Right. And that's why I like to use this opportunity to encourage people to download Scam Shield. I don't have it. It is a Scam Shield app, yeah. Okay. yeah. I've got Scam Shield on my phone and uh, yesterday, I, uh, at least two calls got blocked. Yes. Oh, nice. Okay. A, a huge yeah. number of uh, calls are blocked. I think we have uh, the exact numbers. We have about 500,000 users to date for Scam Shield. And since 2022, um, the app has helped to block around 200,000 scam calls and detected over 3.5 million scam messages. Wow. I've got quite That's a few huge. to put in there as well. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm going right. to download the app as well. As well. You you so should. I can do that on the Apple Store. Download Amazon. it and then and we're yeah. we're trying to we're, we're upgrade it in that uh, that app. You mm-hmm. know we'll okay. be making uh, more announcements in a in a month to come because we want to have this like chatbot function because right now I think Singapore is very practical. You know it's like I reported it. What happened? Mm. So yeah. at the mm. moment you report, but the app doesn't quite because this is like response. first generation. It doesn't quite respond, mm. so you're not quite sure what has happened. But actually something has happened. That number you have reported, it has been blocked. You know put into that black list of numbers but I think um, users want this feedback mechanism back to them mm. so I think that's what we are working on for the next uh, generation next version yeah. of our scam shield um, and also we want to be able to present scam trends you know uh, new typologies so that our users are also educated in the process can you also tell us a little bit uh, about ACT we'll do that when we come back because ACT I think is really important as well okay we are speaking to the Minister of State for Home Affairs and Social and Family Development Ms. Sun Shilling. The time is 8.16. KISS 92 Time Check brought to you by Putian. Introducing Putian's day. So we've got Scam Shield. Mm. Uh, can you also tell us a little bit about ACT, what it means, how it works? Yes. We thought that it would be useful to have a call to action um, so that people know what to do. Um, and ACT, A-C-T, stands for ADD, which is ADD, Scam Shield app. C for check check the sources of the information. Is it from an official source of information? You can also check with uh, friends and family whether they received um, mm. you know, um, the same message and what do they think about it? Is it true? Is that offer real? You know, or for example, check for property, a proper property agent if that property rental listing, whether it's, a, it's genuine. Right? Mm. So C stands for check and T, the tell part, is tell authorities, tell the bank, bank um, you know, and other government agencies if you suspect they've been a victim of scam, you have to act on it really quickly Mm, you know once you think you're a scam victim because now the banks have a kill switch right but you have to notify the bank but um, the banks are doing a lot more as well like I talk about it fraud analytics and so and so forth but we wanted to have a clear call to action to fellow Singaporeans add check tell so you can do something to stop yourself from becoming a scam victim yeah Mm. what about older folk you know I mean I think they're really a key target market for scammers because they have lots of money in the bank or, or under their mattress or wherever it is they may they may store it uh-huh. and they're very sort of gullible to messages that come through because these messages nowadays they look so genuine you know they this do. is the CPF this is the I this is IRAS this is whichever ministry or anything we need to verify your details can you click on this link and as soon as they do that's it. Yeah, and some of them will give everything. Everything that they have just to be able to sort whatever problem it is out. So how do we stop the older folk from this this trigger-happy uh, action that they seem to like to do? You know, they're like, they see it, they're gullible, they click on it, and then that's it. Yes. Well, first and foremost, actually... Um Folks above 60 years old are actually not the largest targets. Uh, no, oh, they're the not the largest okay. segment of victims. Okay. They comprise only about 8.8% okay. of victims. Um, we can talk about that slightly later, but to answer your question for uh, the elderly folks, when we look at the scam types that they fall prey to, uh, it typically tends to be like fake friend calls, oh. uh, uh. China official impersonation scam. So people be- befriending them in mm. a way or scaring them. So, like, if you if you purport to be from a government agency, you scare them, you see. Yeah. And uh, b- because they may not remember or they think that they had unknowingly committed an offence or a crime oh. and they believe it. And for fake friend call, is because they have relatives and friends and sometimes they may think I've forgotten about someone and someone yeah. calls up and oh, say, hey, right. I know you from like 30 years ago and they're like, uh, oh, okay. Oh, sure, okay. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, there are certain typologies that elderly 
uh, folks are more likely to more vulnerable to. And I think what we're trying to do is work through the relevant channels, whether or not it is the pioneer generation, you know, the um, uh, silver ambassadors that go doing house visits, because you need to actually earn the trust of the elderly. Mm. Tell them that actually you may be vulnerable to such scam types. Please uh, be aware. Please be careful. We can consult your children. Or if you need help, we can help you set uh, bank limits, for mm. transaction limits, mm. for instance. Mm. Or if you really don't need it, don't use internet banking. Yeah, right. yeah. I think that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like my mom, she's like, she cannot, she cannot get around to using internet banking, which I think is safe because she's also very gullible and she would be one to just click on those links, you know, very yeah. easily. If, if, if those over 60s are not the largest group, mm -hmm. Then who are who are the largest group? Um, unfortunately, young people. Oh really? Oh, I yes. thought they were tech savvy. I thought they'd be so savvy. But well, you spend all your time online. It just mm. makes you more likely. It's like I always think about it as like crossing the road. You know, it's like you can have traffic lights, right? But people are not exactly observing um, mm. the yeah. use of traffic lights, or people have just thought that ro the roads are very safe. You no longer look right, left, and right before mm. you cross the mm. road. And then on top of that, who are the ones who use the roads the, the most? most. Yeah. Yes. And in this case, it's the youngsters mm. online who are using those digital services the most. And to be honest, I've, I've asked my, my folks to take a look at um, the numbers because I've mentioned about the increasing number of scams, but the absolute money that's lost per scam is actually declining. And that's also because e-commerce type of scams, you actually lose on a per transaction basis probably less. Like maybe you spend $200 buying a pair of Adidas shoes that isn't, hasn't been delivered to you. It will never right. be del delivered to you. Yeah. Mm, but that's mm. all the money you lose. Compared to, for example, investment scam, whereby an elderly person could lose maybe like a million dollars because yeah. he has invested in a friend's investment mm. opportunity and it turns out to be fake. You know? mm, so mm. there is a difference. Um, so on the e-commerce scams, you have a huge number of uh, such offences being committed. But for every offence, every crime committed there, you lose less money. Mm, but mm. for the business or the investment type scams, less of these offences and scams, but each time you lose, oh, large sums of money. Like yeah. my business recently got, uh, the bank account got uh, scammed. Uh, little bits of money were being taken out first for Facebook advertising, but mm. it wasn't actually uh, Facebook advertising. So I managed to catch it sort of in time. There was only like $1,000, but the bank said they'll, they, I'd get the money back. Mm. But I asked them how it was possible that the scammers actually got into the account. And mm. they said, you got to be careful where you tap your cards. Mm. So is this something we need really? to look at? Yeah, that's what they said. Where are you scary? So where you, tap your, you know, this. you're cashless, you know, because yeah. people are just going around tap, tap, yeah, tap. Yeah, exactly. So is this something that we need to be looking out for? Because wow. the bank says it, uh, it, it is a quite a high number. It's quite rampant now. Mm. So they did warn me against being careful where the ca card is being tapped. Mm. So are these devices something we should be looking out for? Or should we be going back to good old cash? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think the, 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 the larger thing that we need to be concerned about is that in a sense your account has been taken over, mm. remote controlled. Yeah. Mm. So you have to think about how, what are the channels in which your account could have been compromised sure, in this way. Yeah. So what you've just shared is one channel, mm -hmm. a way in which your account has been taken over mm -hmm. and uh, there are other there are other ways like for example if you were to click on the clickable link and you install a malware for instance unfortunately mm -hmm. and that happens mm -hmm. into your it's computer way, yeah mm -hmm. so the right. banks are also not entirely behind the curve they're trying to um, have in place certain levers that they can um, use so for example uh, I talked about fraud analytics so certain softwares that they can use to observe if there are changes in user patterns right so for example if you have never transacted in a certain currency before and suddenly you start doing multiple transactions mm -hmm. then before you even activate the kill switch they will kill it for you yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. then yeah. they'll ask you right yeah. yeah but what I guess the banks are concerned with is that because they're acting in a way before you give consent or before you give instruction. So there could be instances where they do something which actually is in a way false positive. Mm. Meaning that it's not a scam but they just went in and they stopped the transaction. Imagine an angry customer calling up and said, I wanted to do this. And mm. he just stopped the transaction. So banks are also worried about that. Yeah. So they're yeah. caught between a rock and a hard place, right? Mm -hmm. But I think um, 
banks are being generally they're, they're cautious they want to do something about scams yes and they know that they're supposed to be the protectors of your money yeah. and we should be thankful we should yes. be very thankful yeah, yes so they're investing in fraud analytics and all the relevant yeah. softwares and levers that they can have no, i'm very great. very That's thankful great. for yeah. for my banks yeah. because you know they're doing their best to ensure that you don't get scammed and my money is coming back which absolutely. i'm grateful for as well because a lot of people don't get their money back absolutely and i i think we we need to thank uh, you and your team as well because i mean we know it's not easy yeah. keeping up with with all this because they i'm sure the trends change very quickly and the very and the quickly. methods the change time. very quickly very right very quickly we can it's, find, a, yeah. it's amazing it's a professional business it, it is my friends it yeah. is yeah. the victims are all well sorry in singapore perpetrators are all overseas we are yeah. a huge lucrative market people are spending all their time thinking about how to scam us mm. yeah. so fellow singaporeans please yes. be, be careful please <laughs> act don't scams. be complacent okay we're going to go back on uh, on the radio mm -hmm. Traffic. On the PIE heading west towards Tuas after Clementi Avenue 6's exit, it's causing a bit of backup because an accident has occurred. Avoid lane 2 if you're along that stretch. What's happens if you spot anything, it's double eight double five zero nine two zero. Good morning and welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. We hope you're enjoying the show so far. Our guest for this morning is Minister of State for Home Affairs and Social and Family Development, Ms. Sun Sherling. And earlier on, we played a song that was another one of your picks, uh, which is Pink's A Million Dreams. <laughs> Why did you pick that song? It's another one of my children's favourite songs. <laughs> uh, my favourite line in that song says, uh, Every night I lie in bed, uh, the brightest colours fill my head. Oh. You know, a million dreams are keeping me awake. And I think that that's, I hope, that's something that every Singaporean, regardless your age, you know, um, even if you might be retired, that your life is still filled with colours and dreams of what you'd like to achieve together mm. with family and friends. And I think that would be lovely. You hope and meaning to life. And that's, that's of course, nice. taken off uh, the movie The Greatest Showman, Showman. which yes. was a great movie as well. Great movie as well. On our Facebook page, Matthew has come up with something that is quite interesting. People who use Scam Shield, yes. you've got to, you need, they need to understand that it is like a crowdsourcing platform. Yes. The more you put in, yes. the better it gets. User-generated yes. content. It's user-generated. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he's saying that's very important. So when you when you when you come across these scams, you need to input this, just to make the system work better. Yes, indeed. indeed. Now the question I have then is: so we've we've got ACT and and the things you're supposed to do, and we've got Scam Shield. Um, how young is the education beginning? Are we taking this into schools? In schools, from primary schools, we have uh, character and citizenship education. Um, there's cyber wellness. It begins with good cyber hygiene. Mm -hmm. So young children are being thought like if you want to set up a password, set up a strong password. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not your birthday. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, don't anyhow click, click, click. Yeah. And um, if you're going to be using your parents' e-wallet, um, mm -hmm. actually this is something that we want to warn um, parents about. So set limits and tell your children what and what not to do mm. with e-wallets because I think we've seen instances we've read in media about children racking up tens of thousands yes. of dollars yes. of yes. Uh, For bills, sure. you know, yes. just because of what they're using yeah. with e-wallets. So all that goes into the realm of cyber hygiene. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I and think I think that's, that's easy for children to understand. And that's that is good starting advice. from primary school now. Yes. Yes. So earlier we were talking about how quickly the trends change yes. for scams. I yes. mean, what what are the current trends right now because we've seen all the police force giving you a call people even calling via whatsapp dressed yeah. up as people that look like people of authority what are the current ones that we need to look out for the most current um uh, you know in terms of scam types mm -hmm. uh, like i mentioned uh, property rental scams mm. um, as well as job scams and e-commerce scams and um, that's because, I think, because of the general market environment. And like I said, I think people are a lot more careful nowadays. So if it involves large sums of monies, they are unlikely, victims are unlikely to transact yeah. those mm. large sums. Mm. But yeah. if they think, oh, it's only a couple of dollars here, a couple of dollars there, they let their gut down. 
Mm. But it still yeah. become a scam victim anyway if it's a scam. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. Just got a text message from someone actually okay. who's oh. listening in. And uh, well, he, he's, uh, he's asked me, you know, I've tried to download the Scam Shield app, but there are three scam shields Oops. in there oh. which is the correct one wow it's the one okay. that looks like a fox yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, that's okay. the okay, blue one right? so it's the first one yeah it okay. looks like a fox that's yes. the one yes. the All foxy right. one and that's remember <laughs> once you've downloaded it to activate it yes you have to activate the app otherwise it just sits on your phone okay yeah for sure so you have to activate the app once you've downloaded doing it. that as we speak yeah. right <laughs> okay, we are speaking to uh, Ms. Sun Shelling, Minister of State for Home Affairs and Social and Family Development. We'll continue this conversation on The Big Show TV. That, uh, it is Wednesday, the 26th of April. Kiss 92 Day Check brought to you by Gain City Megastore at Sumai Karot's 8. So it says here, set Scam Shield as your default caller ID and spam app. Mm -hmm. I should definitely say yes, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I should, right? Yes, I'm downloading it. So, so basically when someone, so, so what happens, because this is the first time I'm actually doing it, uh, when, say, a plus six five number that calls in is not an actual uh, Singapore number and stuff like that, what will Scam Shield do? It will block it, so you won't even so, receive it. Oh, you so, won't even receive it? Okay, uh, for numbers that have already been blocked. Been blo say yes. say yes. it hasn't been blocked yet. Um, but if you know that this is a scam because somebody um, yeah yeah you know you has told person, me or something and so you report that number ah oh, right Using okay yeah. Yeah. okay yeah. okay yeah. and yeah. if i have a whole bunch of numbers that have already been blocked because we're allowed to block before scam shield and yeah. stuff like that yeah. can i input those numbers into scam shield but th those might not be scams right it could just be people that you want to block before no, no, right. no 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 <laughs> no 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 i'm not talking I, not talking about individuals that i don't <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but actual like scam numbers. Uh, are yes. we allowed to input? Yes, we yes, are as yes, well. You okay. Are. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll block some Just people. Just make sure they're scam numbers. <laughs> yeah, though. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I feel like these days I'm, I'm quite rude when I get these calls from. Uh, from random people, I think, like telemarketers. Because like, people are selling your numbers. That's the thing. People are selling databases. Selling yeah. databases. There was one time it was actually from my bank. They were trying to get in touch with me, but because I heard a foreign voice, right? Thought... I was just writing the person yeah. off. So I'm like, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm busy. And then this happened for like a few days yeah. until the bank finally got in touch with me. We've been trying to get in touch with you. I'm like, what? It was yeah. you guys. Yeah. You know, and, but, yeah. but and that's why I'm very concerned about it because you know the downside of all these scams is yeah. that it's eroding trust in our society. Exactly. exactly. Yes. That's why I say you miss exactly. business, you miss bank calls, you miss work calls. Yes. I miss phone calls from the library. Oh. And oh. they just wanted to ask me about something, you know, some reference number or something like that. And I basically ignored their call four times. Because this poor little librarian. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> right. a little lady. She called me and like, you know, Miss Soon, I've been trying to contact you about this book or whatsoever. And I, I, she's like, why haven't you been answering me? And I said, I thought you were scammer <laughs> oh, you know, no. so did lady. you did you not pick up because it wasn't a registered number in your phone or well, did fair, something look fair, like it was a singaporean number there was yeah. nothing it was there a was very, nothing a, to ignore there was nothing to ignore oh, so, right, okay. it's just that you know because your guard is up you're like i don't recognize this number yeah, yeah. you know yeah. so to be honest my, my children's school has tried calling <laughs> me at the library and i have not picked up any number that isn't in my contact list right. yeah. yeah and that's and that's a problem it's okay. a problem because Singaporeans, we are a high trust society mm. and it really shouldn't be this way. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. hope those numbers are in your phone yes, book I know. now. I okay. know. <laughs> and you know, I'm sure many people are actually going through this. Yes. And yes. the thing is, while they're calling, I'm getting irritated, no? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like... Your blood starts to boil. so many of these scammers? <laughs> and all that? So then persistent. I find out it wasn't a scam it and then you feel bad. You know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is hard. And it, it becomes tough when, when your trust is eroded. And, and it, it, as you said, it's tough for business. It's tough for But everybody. that's because we're scared, you see. Yes. We don't, we we don't want to get scammed. So for businesses, we now have this uh, SSIR. Basically, it's a registry where le legit businesses yeah. register that's all right. their numbers. Yes, to call, yeah. Right? So whether yeah. it's DBS or any other bank, you know, anybody who wants to send you a message, so that in future, you know that this number that comes through with the heading DBS bank, for mm. that it's legit. So you don't mm, have right. to worry about it. So mm. we're just hiring businesses along. If you're a legit business, no reason why you shouldn't register, right? That's, yeah, true. Exactly. That's true. You brought something interesting up earlier about parents being uh, more vigilant when it comes to their children sharing the same e-wallet. Like mm. I, I realized at the bank uh, the other day when I was handling this for my business, how I had not noticed like a couple of cents were going, a couple of cents to this Facebook advertising, mm. uh, that I should actually 
set up and my bank told me to do this set it up on the internet banking every cent that gets deducted you should get pinged either by an sms or an email oh. yes so parents should do the same i feel that every cent that their child uses even if it's at 7-eleven buying like some chocolate for a dollar it should ping them and say the wallet has just been used for 70 cents a dollar on the bus whichever it is because that way at least you can keep track of of the amount that's going yeah, out and i think it's also good in a sense that you inculcate a sense of responsibility to your yeah. kid because like um you know one common uh i would uh, something that parents have brought up to me is that because children nowadays they also don't use dollars and cents mm. yeah, you know, they literally don't. the, pap- the they paper they can't count anymore <laughs> yeah apart from that they can't count anymore they think it's so easy tap tap yes. tap tap yeah tap. yeah so what are, what was what's the bit about financial literacy and, yes. You know, all yeah, these values yeah. about savings and yeah. everything. It's not so, it's not, especially for children, yes. it's yeah. difficult for them to comprehend. Yeah. Yeah. So I think parents have to find different ways to inculcate financial responsibility and mm. literacy. Mm. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day when I was growing up, POSB, the Donald Duck no, Savings the Bank. The Donald Duck no, Savings no, Bank. Also, yeah. the squirrel, that? right? There yeah. was a squirrel for POSB. I can't remember the squirrel, but I know I had a Donald Duck Savings Bank. But you're right, though, because nowadays everything is just tap, 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 tap. Yeah. You don't realize how quickly your money goes. You know, yes. everything is your grab and all that. And and it's no longer I'm counting my dollars and cents and I know exactly how much I've used and all mm. that. So, so you're right. I think kids need to know the value of money in that sense. And you know, early on we were talking about the younger generation getting scammed more than mm. you know than anyone else. I think it's also because you know for them it's all about convenience. Yes. Mm. You know, the conventional way of doing things is a little bit of an inconvenience to them. Yes. So yes. for them, anything that's convenient they don't think twice. It, it, it baffles me. I mean, I'm a person who cannot walk around without cash on me. Mm. I, I need a certain amount of cash. I don't right? have any cash but on me. But my kids walk around... No cash. Without, cashless. I, I'm they cashless. They don't have a five-cent yeah. coin on them. Yeah. But the Absol- phone is indispensable, right? Absolutely. Everything is... Tap, 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 yep. tap, no, I always have to have cash in my wallet. Like, so I'm, I'm yeah. old-fashioned in that sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's some. lay down all our money here. <laughs> 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 it's so scary, and I always warn them: you're you're tapping and you're tapping and you're tapping, and you don't know. You don't know how much you're spending. You don't know how much you're spending. You don't because I asked somebody. I can't remember who it was. You know, they they bought something, and I was like, "Oh, how much was that?" Oh, I don't know. I just tapped. Yeah. Because you don't even know how much you're paying. But I encourage everyone to still have a Some little money. bit of cash. Yeah. In the wallet because you know you never know. Yeah. yeah. You know, you'll need it. You go to a petrol kiosk. You know, you want to give the uncle a little bit. You know, of mm. cash. Yeah. You know, mm. if not every. If not, you know these what, poor people, you know, you know what he'll say him. to you? You can pay now, me. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> will it come to me. that one? You, it will. You know, you know, they do do that in some countries, right? right? You Just have pay people. Now up, me. You have buskers on the side of the road with with the QR with code. With a oh. QR yes. code, and you're paying the busker through a QR code. Yep, they have that now. It's oh. unreal. So it's all one, cashless. I got one thing, one important point that you raised. It's about the characteristics of uh, different groups of people. Yeah. Mm. So for for, for youngsters, you mentioned just now about convenience, but there's another aspect of it, which is about um, Im- whether or not, I mean, it's, it's a bit direct to say this, but you know, about being a bit more impulsive, maybe? Yes. Mm. Uh, uh, um, convenience. Uh, yeah. Convenience. Mm. And, but, uh, or when you come across a, a deal that really sounds good and attractive, yeah. Yeah. and you're like, it's, it, you know, I'm just paying for a holiday or I'm paying mm. for a ticket on carousel or whatsoever. It's a good offer. Let me just grab it. Yeah. So if you have those tendencies, it makes you more vulnerable to being scammed. Absolutely. So earlier I had talked about elderly who are more vulnerable to being befriended by yeah. scammers. Yeah. So for young people, it's not only about convenience, it's also about you know just being very quick to react and respond. FOMO as well. Oh, FOMO, FOMO. Yeah. 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 So I think we just need to be you know mindful that each and every one of us, we have blind spots. Mm. Um, we just have certain personality characteristics that may make us more vulnerable to certain types of scams and certain types of dangers yeah. mm. Mm. and I think you know this is it's good personal awareness of course I would imagine social media platforms being a massive scam haven as mm. well right mm. you know your TikTok your Instagram your Facebook shopping and all that because mm-hmm. you see all these ads pop up mm-hmm. and you don't even know if they it's a good point. If they don't you know you don't even yeah. know if they're legit let's bring this up okay. on, on yeah. air here we go Colors of the wind. 
Colors of the Wind by Tori Kelly. I'm so used to the Vanessa Williams yes. version I of this song. I haven't heard that version. Yeah. Uh, this once again was a choice of uh, Ms. Sun Shiling, Minister of State for Home Affairs and Social and Family Development. Once again, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Minister. Uh, so why did you choose the Tori Kelly version? and not the uh, Vanessa Williams version. Well, I actually wasn't particular about which version, okay. but I just loved the song because it was a song I heard when I was growing up. Mm. And I think earlier on I was talking about nature and I was talking about, you know, just respecting every life and soul. And mm. it's not just about human beings. Right. You know, I do believe that there is life and soul in the environment around us. Um, and this song came to mind and I thought it's an old song yes um, some of our young people nowadays may not know <laughs> this song but I think it's uh, good for us uh, you know those of us in the maybe boomer post boomer yeah. generation I think it was taken off the animated movie Pocahontas yes. Pocahontas yes. Yes. one of my favourite yeah. cartoons yes it's really good uh, good movie you know uh, Minister we were talking earlier about scams on, on the Big Show TV mm -hmm. and how there are different sort of methods that scammers are using and I feel like one of the biggest methods would be via social media platforms yes uh, you do see lots of advertising on TikTok, instagram facebook yep. for cheaper versions of say clothing or items that you may want mm -hmm. because they've geo-targeted the stuff that you search for yes how do we prevent ourselves from falling into something that looks too good to be true uh, to be honest, on this front, uh, we are in the process of um, rolling out certain uh, policies and legislation. We're working with social media companies. Uh, we are looking at an Online Criminal Harms uh, Act and Bill, oh, wow, um, okay. whereby we will work actively in partnership with social media companies to get them to, if we know that there is a scam perpetuating on their website um, or, or their platform, that they should take it down. Mm. Um, and they should also have uh, certain codes of practices basically in-house to, uh, you know, to uh, encourage them mm. to proactively search for these and basically just block them and, and do something on their side. So mm. I think coming back to your question, I think user verification is something mm. that um, I think we're seriously encouraging different platforms to have some form of user verification. I mean, it's not helpful to you if you're a legit platform. Yeah. If half your users are people who are anonymous and you have right. no idea whether they exist as a person or as a business. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. who's going to believe a platform at the end of the day? And also uh, in-platform payment um, uh, systems or ability to hold customers' monies in escrow mm. you know, mm. before, you know, do, do not release their monies until they receive the goods. Carousel yeah. does yeah. that yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we need to be able to have uh, certain structures to be able to help our members of the public uh, share with them that certain platforms have these uh, protections in place. And if you want to transact online, these are safe platforms. Mm. And right. then for those platforms that have not instituted all these protection mechanisms, We'll tell them that, hey, other people are doing this, it's doable, you might want to do it, it's good for your business case. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. that's great that uh, lots of moves are being made. Just got a text from one of my friends, mm -hmm. said, bro, I just got a call from someone pretending to know me and asking me to guess who he is. <laughs> Yeah. Long lost lover there. Oops. there probably, probably a Nigerian prince yeah. who wants to tell you Give about you some... $2 million dollars yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Morning, Tommy. Tommy, Robin Hood. Oh, yeah. Robin Hood. Good morning, morning bro. <laughs> okay, um, so once again, uh, before we let you go, Minister, we yes. want to remind everyone to download the Scam Shield app. Download, yep. activate, Get it on your phone. It's, it's so got important. the Fox logo on it. It's yeah. blue and it's got the Fox logo. So remember, it. Uh, make sure you're downloading the correct one. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Minister, for being with us this morning. We really appreciate it. And we hope we'll come on the show again real soon. Thank you. Everyone stay safe and be well. All right. Thank we're going to end up with uh, your last song request, which is a song we all know. Uh, the Road Ahead, which was uh, the NDP song back in 2021. Why did you choose this song? Um, so can everyone can stay safe on the road ahead while they are travelling on the road and driving. <laughs> 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 but I love the fact that each and every one of us can make a difference. Mm. And that I think this is what the song means to me. All right. Thank okay. you so much. Uh, we've been speaking to Ms. Sun Sherling, Minister of State for Home Affairs and Social and Family Development. You have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you. Minister. You too. Thank you. One man on